We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Ezekiel Yaitok is on standby. He joins us this morning uh, via Zoom. Otuwekong, many thanks for joining us and Merry Christmas. Thanks for having me and Merry Christmas to everybody in Plus TV Africa and beyond. All right, then. Uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. As always, we would have to look through the papers and see uh, what stories made it to the front page and what big stories, what are people talking about or what should people be looking at. Uh, the leadership is what we're starting off with and it talks about the 2023, it talks about the 2023 presidency. I beg your pardon, uh, that would probably be from yesterday. Uh, quickly, fast forward to today. It talks about uh, NAS and the increase of the budget by 1.3 trillion naira amid rising deficit and debts. NAS increases 2023 budget by 1.3 trillion naira. Wow. Increases budget from 20.5 trillion naira to 21.8 trillion. Nigeria's debt profile may hit 70 trillion next year. We're looking at that's 2023. Senate in rowdy session over Buhari's 22.7 trillion request. Ask CBN to extend deadline for old Naira notes to June. Okay. 2023 G5 governors weigh Tunubu or B options. Wow. This G5 governors like a force you need to reckon with. <laughs> you know, even after even after 2022, moving forward, Lagos lawyers, IGP orders killer policeman suspension. It should have been done uh, without, you know, even this time. Auction, EFCC invites bid for 61 forfeited houses and others. I mean, so if you want to buy, it just feels like it's time to venture into all of that. Gunmen bomb police headquarters in Anambra and free suspects. 19 dies in two Niger road crashes. Ohanese President General Obiozor dies at 80. It's, a, it's unfortunate, but I think he's, he's you know, lived uh, for some decades right there. And it's very commendable. But however, I had some prayers with the family. PDP threatens sanction as G5 governors meet Tunubu in the United Kingdom. APC presidential candidate intensifies lobby. OB banks on President, uh, former President Olusegun Obasan just barking. It is too late in a day to go back to Atiku. Reconciliation failed, says source. Governors on vacation. The risks being disciplined, anti-party activities. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so interesting how, the, you know, the captions are, uh, are being put out this morning, but I can't wait to share Ezekiel's thoughts on all of this. Defense health gets lion's share. National Assembly passes 21.8 trillion naira budget. And NLC gives Buhari condition for new minimum wage. Uzodima mourns Ohanese's leader's leader as he uh, he dies at 80. Calabar death cross river PDP lampoons Ayade for going ahead with the carnival. Uh, that's what you find also. Reps demand injustice or demands justice for lawyers slain by policemen. Car explosion kills seven Lagos residents heading for revival. And uh, that's it this morning on the Punch newspaper. But let's just quickly turn our attention to the Daily Trust and the nation before we have Ezekiel join us uh, to share his thoughts or bring his thoughts on some of the headlines. After selling 649 vehicles, EFCC auctions 160 houses, land worth billions of naira. The Ziani ex NIA DG's house orders up for grabs. Government agencies order to enjoy right of first refusal. Experts commend decision, advocate due process, will announce revenue from sales soon. That's what the spokesman is saying. And all of this should, you know, we, 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 okay. 
Fiscal activities that shaped Nigeria's economy in 2022. It's more like an editorial. Uh, you want to check that out. Nigerian refugees uh, turned taxi driver sacked from Niger Republic. Bandits kill 14, abduct 81 in Sokoto and Katsina. I'm fed up with my marriage, Ganduje's daughter tells court. Oh, well. Rep Suasu, Bajabi Amila did not deceive you. National Assembly raises 2023 budget by 1.3 trillion naira. Exploring six century old link between Kanu and Algerian scholar. Uh, these are some of the headlines you find this morning. And we have the Nation newspaper. The Nation says 2023, we came day orders for close support for Atiku. Buhari's Osiba just beach his son in Tunubu's campaign. IG orders suspension of killer ASP uh, Vandi. New Nara notes Senate urges CBN to shift deadline to June the 30th. Now the headlines we find this morning on the Nation newspaper. Well, we quickly, uh, you know, introduce our guest once again, Ezekiel Yaito. Thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> It's good to have you. Well, the leadership. Uh, let's 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 start off with the leadership now. Uh, the leadership is talking about the increase of the budget by 1.3 trillion naira. At uh, Ezekiel, I'd like to share your thoughts. And we know that uh, this we have a revenue challenge, and we also have deficit, budget deficit, and we we have too many issues that we're grappling with. We're looking at 1.3 trillion. How do you respond to this? Okay, the, the very first thing is that I think Nigerians, I couldn't say this enough, we need to really understand what government is and what governance is. It's something specialized. It is not something that you dash somebody or it's not a reward process. It's a job that you apply for and there is a job description for the three tiers of government. For the judiciary, you may not really speak much about it, but the other two are elective, and that's talking about the, the, the um, uh, executive and, of course, the legislature. Why do I say this? There is something that you must understand about budget and budgeting. Most people really don't sit down to understand what we are doing. In budget, you are saying that there are one, two, three important things that you must do. Those things cost you a hundred naira. They now come and ask, how much can I generate by way of estimation? I can only generate, say, 50 naira. Then I'm asking myself, this differential of 50 naira, how am I going to get it can i bring it down to 90 or to 80 and then you said no i've cut and cut from 150 to 100 100 is what will make life good for this country okay then that differential of 50 naira you have two things you can do if i basically one thing borrowing you can borrow internally you can borrow externally you can borrow, borrow from the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is what they call the Ways and Means. If you are borrowing from the Central Bank of Nigeria to avoid abuse, there are certain conditions, criteria, limitations, checks and balances. And some of them include, number one, there's a certain threshold that you cannot borrow beyond. That's number one. Number two, you must retire what you borrowed the previous year before you can now borrow in the new year to ensure that it's a cycle which is like um, an envelope that is kept for you. You return the old one, you take the new one. At the end of the day, as at today, we are having a budget that probably has something in, the defi in, in deficit in the, in the region of probably 11 or 12 trillion. Now, what they've done again is go back to CBN through the ways and means, and they have not followed the laws, they've not followed the conditions, they've not followed the criteria. What it means is just that it's a recipe for chaos. Now, even as tight as it was and the differentials that we had, 
when he went back, the National Assembly increased it again by over a trillion. Why did they increase? Yes, statutorily or legally, they have, or constitutionally, they, they have the right of appro appropriation. That means they have the right to add or subtract or tinker with, you know. And um, at the end of the day, if you look at what they are doing, it has to do with their personal interest in what they call their constituency projects. They, they don't come out that clean, but if you really look at it or you are friends with them and you hear the back door, the back house conversations, you know, this is election time coming. Some of them are not sure of coming back. So they are like, how can we give ourselves some insurance of some sort? So at the end of the day, it is one thing, personal interest against the constitutional provision of national interest. And that's because in our leadership recruitment profiling, we really don't think of the people that we send to offices. We are too concerned about where is he from, is he from my tribe, and things like that. And we end up bringing mechanics or engineers to pilot an aircraft. What's the result? Poverty capital of the world. When will we stop and think? So, but um, if you look at the 2023 uh, proposed budget, I mean, just before all of this, we're looking at um, a recurrent expenditure of uh, 8.2 trillion naira. And uh, when you juxtapose it with the capital expenditure, it means that we're going to spend more in uh, the cost of administration, running of government. No, 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 no you're, mixing, you're mixing two up. Excuse me? You are mixing two up. Okay, so we have, uh, you know, the expenditure, but we seem to be the real current uh, uh, expenditure in 2023 is put at 8.2 naira. Yes, if that's recurrent, it means capital is over 12, is uh, close to 12 trillion. It is less. No, 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 because the budget is about 23 trillion, isn't it? No, the budget is not 22. It was 20, you know, uh, 20, about 20 trillion, but that, that has been increased yeah. now to it, 21 point. But you know that Good. over time we have never, um, I'm going to get the figures immediately. And of course, in the course of this conversation, we'll look at that. Now we have never, um, I don't remember the last time we, you know, we allocated so much to capital expenditure or you know in you know what i'm talking about uh, yes, having yes, no, uh, projects yes. and what have you so we always yeah. allocate so much for because that would be recurrent and that involves the cost of running governance and so we're yes. looking at 8.2 trillion so what's left for um infrastructure and development is less no 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 if you have 21 and you have eight for recurrent it means you are having close to 11 for capital in fact more than 11 because 21 from 8 gives you about um what am i doing where am i thinking this morning yes it gives you about 13 yes that's right because 21 from 8 gives you 13 so we have to determine which one is capital which one is recurrent I'm sure you get what I mean. No, I do. But, you know, so what then was the reason why the National Assembly had fled the government over the 8.2 trillion naira for recurrent expenditure? You, you see, there, there's a trick that these people, you know, you know, I'm contesting to for the, the, the governorship seat in our state. There's a lot of trick. There's a lot of deceit. There's a lot of on ethical practices in that thing we call budget. Budget is just a piece of paper that means absolutely, it's like a ritual that means nothing because people don't stick to it, you know? I'll give you an example. Now, there is what is budgeted and there's what is cash backed, what is released. Have you looked at the performance of our 2022 budget? If you had you know, a certain percentage, okay, let's say, assuming it's going to be 50-50, let just to make it a little easier that recurrent is 50%, capital is 50%, just to make it easy. You would realize that 
Now, if they released about, if the, the, the cash back was about, um, say, 80% of, 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 of that budget, you realize that they have released 100% of recurrent, you know? And then it means that instead of 50 50, capital is now going to take maybe something in the neighborhood of 30. No, so but, 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 but Ezekiel, this is what I was saying. Uh, it's a good thing that I have the figures in front of me now. Yes, now, we're still, still talking about you know, the budget when it was the total expenditure when it was 20.51 trillion naira, right? Yes, yes, With a budget yes. deficit at the time of 10.78 uh, uh, trillion. And a total right. revenue of nine point seven three trillion, which doesn't even. How yes. do you have a deficit, uh, you know, that supersedes what you're going to, you know, That's earn? What I say. So, so, so yes. Two. So the capital expenditure just before, you know, uh, twenty one point trillion naira was pegged at 3.53 trillion. So it means that we're spending less and, you know, for capital expenditure. You know, you know, and recurrent expenditure is pegged at 8.2 trillion. So we allocated so more. That's what I've been trying to say. Wrong. No, no, you're not doing a total analysis. A budget has two arms, capital and recurrent. A plus B must make the total budget. Now, what you've just given me is 8 plus 3, which is 11 instead of 21. So 8.27 and then you yes. have uh, 8.27 with three yes. with 5.35. Yes, if you add the two, 8 plus 5 gives you 13. We are talking of 21. So there is still an envelope that is missing somewhere. A plus B must give you 21 point something. But if you add those two, you have not gotten it. And budget has just recurrent and um, capital as just those two arms, doesn't have a third arm. Now it is when you come to recurrent that you have running of government and you know salaries and wages, okay? So you can keep going, but it starts from that A, B, recurrent uh, and uh, capital and recurrent, okay? Then when you come to recurrent, you now have running of government and uh, salaries and wages. So but that capital and recurrent must add up to give you the total budget. So when you add three point something with eight point something, you are getting something about 13 point something is of 21. So there's something missing somewhere. I, I have not um, taken time to study the details, but conceptually, that's what I was looking at. I also looked at other things like um, the sources, the benchmarks that they have put and the, uh, what, what the production quota that they are looking at is um, beyond what we are getting as of today. So the question is, what are you doing? What have you put in place to make sure that we'll be able to get more barrels of oil per day? I've not seen why they should be what they've been able to look at to give us more. And secondly, the benchmark of $75, of, of $75 to, um, of 75 uh, Naira to a dollar. Uh, no, no, no. Why am I getting myself off? Of 75 um there's something I wanted to get uh, dollars to a barrel, yes, that they are using. One has to ask, I mean, how is that ambitious? Uh, is that, um, you know, is, is that realistic uh, on the average over the period? I think that it's a budget that um, they are just rushing to get out and get what they want. So the new administration, the two, the different um, you know parties coming in must sit down today today and study the budget and rework the budget so that whoever comes in within few days of getting into office will be able to send something back to the national assembly on what is workable what these guys are doing they know they are not going to want to be the ones to implement the budget so they are just um, cutting things in and out just pass it get their own part of the pie and then move on and or check out as it were Okay, uh, let's leave the conversation of the budget and look at all the issues on the papers this morning. Yeah. Uh, another talks about, uh, that's on the punch, the PDP threatens sanction as G5 governors meet uh, Tunibu in the United Kingdom. Do you think that yeah. this is just, you know, lip service? I'll, is there I'll, tell you this. I'll tell you this. You know, the name, my, um, my name is Ezekiel, which makes me a prophet of some sort, okay? <laughs> But I actually should have started by expressing our condolences to the Igbo Nation General on the loss of their 
President General. I don't know how that skipped me. Uh, a man who's lived to the lovely age of 80, and um, he's made his marks, and um, we, we, our hearts go to his family. We are, we are grateful to him for the services he offered this nation. Good. Back to PDP 2023. Let me say this. 2020, PDP have lost the plot. I don't know why, how Atiku got himself into this situation, but I can tell you uh, for free that um, 2023 is going to be close to a real two-horse race. It's going to be four horse, but you know the top two are likely going to be um, Bole Ahmed Tinubu and uh, Mr. Peter Obi. And if if I were to advise, number one is that the G5 is most likely going to you know root for um, Mr. Peter Obi. I can say that for a fact because there is no way that they, particularly in the south are going to go for APC. I can tell you that for free. You know, I live here, I'm contesting here. I know that the, the, the passion of the people and the feeling that one Muslim Muslim ticket is, is, is an affront on Christianity. And Christianity is a big deal, you know, in, in, in the South generally. Let me say South, 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 East, okay? And between South, 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 East, you have... Um, so many states, five plus um, six, that's about 11 states. And that's substantial by any stretch of imagination. So what's going to happen is that if I were PDP, rather than lose out, they should start to think in terms of a working understanding between them and um, Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi. I think that Mr. Kwan Kwaso might also come into the mix so that we now see a kind of government of national unity that is being put together against APC that everybody just generally feels that, look, we've had enough, can you people just pack? Not only on account of the Muslim Muslim ticket, but also in terms of the past performance, which a lot of people have some a lot to say against. So if there's this, you know, grand understanding between a PDP you better not lose and be out in the cold. You are better off being wise. That understanding between APC, uh, PDP, NNPP, and Labour Party, because there may not be a clear winner, because right now they may not be able to say, look, we are, you know, there can't be a merger again. There could only be an alliance and the long thinking in terms of how do we share government. If they sit down and have that conversation, they will get APC out and then we'll have something that comes close to a government of national unity between these um, three major parties. I know that I also have SDP on the block and then <clears throat> the other smaller parties. If they, they just say, look, for whatever is worth, let's call it justice, let's call it equity, let's call it national movement, the orientation, the voice of the youth, uh, because you are from the southeast, and there seems to be a lot of momentum so, of so, the um, youth. I, I really don't know uh, how, because it's sounding like you are endorsing uh, this action or the actions of this I'm doing, G5 I'm government. Doing a I'm doing a political analysis. I'm doing analysis. I'm not, my party is not even mentioned in the mix. So <laughs> I I'm, understand. I'm yes. I understand. So, but, you know, it, it's looking like, yes, it's fine. We, we can't... Maybe because, you know, to the other side, because a lot of people seem to f see this as uh, uh, a very good or welcome development uh, for uh, Peter B's presidency or, you know, his uh, campaign and the fact that he's vying for the seat in 2023. But one of the questions I'd like to ask is that why did this G5 governors not support Peter B while he was still a member of the People's Democratic Party? Why did yeah, they not show their support? Because he already saw the hand of time and left. Yeah. So why why were they why did they not support? Why did the likes of Wiki not step down for him and say, you I'll know what, you. we and we pick you and we endorse you? So why are they, you know, acting in this light? I mean, if this is anything to go by, because it's also another thing to say, um, if you know you have it would be the first in its kind that you have governors from a certain political party boldly, you know, throwing their way to um 
another presidential candidate of another party entirely. And we know without, you know, mixing or missing words that this is anti-party activities. You see, you see, 2023 is, 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 is something that has never happened. Not like a year that is coming. It's, 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 there's a lot we need to reprogram our minds and open up our hearts to a lot of things that have never been that will come to be. You know, that's number one. Number two, there's a certain level of arrogance that PDP has that cost it presidency before and they've not learned from it. I, I'm very close to all of them. I'm very close to Mr. Peter Obi. I'm very close to Kwan Kwaso. I'm very close to um, um, Adebayo. I'm very close to Dumebi Kachu. I'm, I'm close to all of them. And I had a discussion with Mr. Kwan Kwaso before he left. And he said, within the party, there's this arrogance that they don't care who you are. They just said, we want to do this. And they don't do strategic analysis and understand the strength of each person. He says, if he went to primaries, those guys can dust him. But he, he, he knows who he is and what he can do. And he's proved it. The same thing with Peter Obi. If the two of them were in PDP as are today, they'll be almost non-entities. Do you understand me? They've come out to show who they are. And PDP, can you imagine the two... Imagine Kwan Kwaso and Peter Obi running together today. They'll be a winner. But these are two people that were inside PDP. And PDP never saw them, never took them serious. So the two guys that were saying, oh, I wish they could come together, were actually inside PDP. And PDP would never have given ticket to any of the two of them. So as of today, I think it's the hand of deity. God is doing something, and he needed to kind of break a lot of the conventions and the traditions and bring new things. I think Nigerians should open up their minds to a lot of possibilities. Don't be too dogmatic about things because there's a likelihood of there going to be nobody having a clear win in 2023 and there will likely be a runoff. And in that runoff, there's going to be a lot of trade-offs and a lot of things are, are possible. And it's not only at the national level, even at the subnational level, Akwaibom has never had a situation where you talk of the big five. That's never. It's always been PDP, PDP, PDP. There's somewhere along the line, APC came into the mix. It became PDP, APC. Somewhere along the line, out of PDP came YPP. Out of APC came NNPP. And of course, ADC. And you now talk of the big five in Akwaibom. It's never happened. So it's going to be the same thing, Working, looking at... There may be no possibility of somebody getting a clear winner. So, 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 so why, why, why don't why this uh, why don't we have this G five governors just leaving the PDP and you know joining the Labour Party? Is that simple? No, they can't. Saying, they can't. Why? No, this can, is why can they do you're that? Talking, no, you're, you're talking academics, intellectuals. Oh, really? Today they are running what is irreversible. Some of the governors are going for Senate. You can't leave the party. It means you lose your seat. Some of them are having people like Wike is having somebody take over from him. He can't move that person to another party now. Those windows have closed. So they are at a point they cannot leave their parties. They can't. It's not politi politically possible. It's not possible. They've got to remain in their party. But you see, what they are doing is they are doing this ideology of person, not party. Person, not party. And they are starting to do aggressive enlightenment of their people on how they can pick and choose. And, you know, a lot of times we just miss, 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 um, we, we kind of fail to see how Nigerians are extremely versatile. And they say, oh, they cannot do. No, there's nothing that has come that Nigerians didn't adjust to immediately. Whether it is about cashless policy, they adjust it to it immediately. Whether it is, don't bring up anything, Nigerians adjust to it. Okay. We are so gifted. We can we can adjust to it. So now they are doing person not party. So they are now picking and choosing. A man has about four logos that he's saying: House of Reps, this person; Senate, this person; Governorship, yeah, Do you understand me? And they are doing it, and it's becoming. And we have two more months, and everybody is going to be enlightened on person not party, you know, ideology. 
And uh, this, maybe in just a minute or less than a minute, is uh, what's happening or what has happened in Anambra State is unfortunate. The fact that uh, police headquarters has been attacked. Why is it that non-state actors seem to be having so much dominance of, uh, you know, the states where you have fully, uh, you have the government, you have uh, the necessary architecture in place, you know, to ensure that lives and properties are protected? There's something about government that is a betrayal of the oath of office that they took to defend the nation. They put their personal interest too much into it. If the federal government wants any of this nonsense to stop today, it will stop. I say it on my honor and with every sense of responsibility. The capacities open to government is almost endless. But we put primordial sentiment, we put personal interest, we put prebendalism far and above the oath of office we swore to be blind to sections or tribes or traditions, but to be fair, free and fair to all concerned. I think what is going on in Anambra State, a lot of people are looking and enjoying some of the politics, Imo State, Enugu, Boy State, but I am looking forward to a government that puts the lives of the Nigerians far above any and every other consideration. Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B is what they swore to. The security and the welfare of every citizen, let me put it that way because they say of the people, shall be the primary purpose of government. The day we understand this, we'll start to elect people not based on whether they know me, they don't know me, but on fit for purpose, who can deliver. On that day, we'll start a journey to making Nigeria one of the greatest nations on earth. All right, then, Ezekiel Yaitok, we have to leave the conversation at, at this point. Uh, that's because we're out of time. Thank you so much. Always a delight to listen to you share your thoughts on some national issues. Thank you. My rice has been waiting. Have, have, I, have I to rush and go and eat my rice? <laughs> That's fine. Do have yourself a Merry Christmas once again and a wonderful 2023. Thank you. Same to you and the management of uh, Plus TV Africa. All right, then. That's the size of it on Off the Press. We'll take a break. When we return, we continue with uh, more interesting conversations. Please stay with us.